You recently published an essay on the compounding issues and pressures leading to the situation at the border. Can you walk us through those? Yeah, I mean, I would mostly attribute, you know, the surge to the conditions that are driving migrants. If you just look at the Northern Triangle states of Central America alone, you had the two major hurricanes in November that left 8 million people in need of humanitarian assistance and countless without homes and, and livelihoods. You, you have the ravages of climate change and other forms in Central America as well, economic and public health devastation wrought by COVID-19, terrible poverty, gang control in many communities, high homicide rates. Um, there's also, I think, you know, beyond those conditions, this issue of pent up demand and remember that many of these migrants and children in particular aren't coming from very far. Tens of thousands were stranded in Mexico under the migrant protection protocols. Others you know, have been expelled and are in Mexico or elsewhere under the public health order um, that basically closed the border to non-essential travelers late March, last March. And um, still others have been denied access to the U.S. through other programs. So these these migrants, a lot of them have been close by all along. Right. And you mentioned denied access. I'm wondering if you can tell me what lingering effect the Trump administration's anti-asylum policies is having that we're potentially seeing play out today. I mean, that's a good way to put it, you know, anti-asylum policies. It's And it's not lingering in the sense that these policies were in place in the distant past, of course. Some are only now being wound down mm -hmm. and, you know, others are still in place. So, I mean, what we've had over the last four years is an administration that essentially tried to dismantle the U.S. refugee and asylum systems, particularly the asylum system on the southern border, and it largely succeeded. Sure. You know, it terminated the Central American Miners Program, which was a modest program that allowed children in certain states, particularly um, Central American states, to come to the United States legally to join their legally present parents in the United States. Why you would kill a program like that, I have no idea. It instituted the zero tolerance policy of criminally prosecuting asylum seekers and separating children from their parents as a cruel deterrent strategy. Of course, hundreds of those children are still separated from their parents. It instituted the you know return to Mexico program, the migrant protection protocols, which pushed 65,000 people outside the United States to wait for their U.S. hearings, mm -hmm. asylum hearings. It entered cooperative agreements with El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, which required migrants who pass through these very, very dangerous countries to actually seek asylum in them. Mm -hmm. And then it, um, it implemented that um, public health order that basically closed the border, which led to the expulsion of asylum seekers without a hearing and the expulsion of unaccompanied children right. in violation of the trafficking laws. So, I mean, I think, I think that Secretary Mayorkas is correct in saying that the new administration needs to rebuild the entire system. Right, so I'm glad, that. Donald, that you mentioned the new administration because that's something I want to ask you about. How much of this is kind of the fault of the previous administration versus the actions of the current administration, in your view? I think... I think um, what we're seeing is um, is the result of the policies of past administration. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mayorkas is totally correct, I think, in saying that what they've inherited is just a decimated asylum system, not just um, in terms of legal standards, but in terms of processing, in terms of procedures. And they're trying to accommodate this surge, uh, you know, while they're dealing with rebuilding that system. Donald Kerwin, Executive Director for the Center of Migration Studies. Really appreciate your time breaking that down for us. Thank you so much. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.